Hello everyone, this is James Jesso of Adventures Through the Mind, and today I want to talk to you about my drug-induced psychosis. The topic of psychosis uh, and delusion and psychotic episodes in the psychedelic community and uh, inside of psychedelic practice has been uh, a, a main area of consideration for me over the last few weeks, especially since uh, releasing my interview with James Kent on the Adventures of the Mind podcast, which was called The Psychedelic Dark Side. My perspectives differ from Kent uh, in a lot of areas, which isn't necessarily accurately reflected in the podcast, uh, although I am currently working on an essay to explore a lot of those differences, explore my own perspective on the issue. But what I would like to share with you today is what I believe is my first and maybe my only, but maybe not my only, basically drug-induced psychosis. It came up uh, several years ago while I was living in Melbourne, Australia, and was uh, consuming a lot of substances, uh, polysubstance use, and frequently, and um, really pushing myself, like pushing my mind big time. So I don't think it was any particular drug, although I was using a lot of um, street amphetamine at that time, which I don't think think was meth, but since I certainly wasn't in a harm reduction mentality at the time, I wasn't exactly checking to make sure that things were pure and things were what I was being told when I was taking them. Either way, it was the intensity in which I was exper experimenting with these things. Uh, for example, one time me and a collection of friends decided to see what would happen if we stayed up uh, for as long as we possibly could with the assistance of drugs. And I, I ended up staying awake, I think, for four days on um, on what I think in hindsight was uh, some cathalone, um, like maybe 3-MMC or... Um, what is that other one? BKMDMA or whatever it might be, one of these methylone type uh, substances that was popular at the time. After my four days awake, I took a three hour nap on somebody's couch and then uh, woke up to consume more drugs and then go out dancing some more. Though the psychotic uh, the, the psychosis that I'm talking about here wasn't necessarily catalyzed by that specific experience. That was the type of behaviors I was employing as often as possible, uh, pretty much as a primary aspect of, uh, of my lifestyle at the time that led me to what I believe was a drug-induced psychosis. So here's what I believe the psychosis was. Um, so I was living in Melbourne at the time and I was getting increasingly darker experiences and I was getting really afraid really scared and afraid and uncomfortable and unhappy and had the even my my friends my my group of friends who were using similar as to i was weren't having these types of experiences and were telling me like hey man it doesn't look like you're happy uh, it doesn't look like you're enjoying yourself and to me i was like no i just haven't taken the right combination of drugs i haven't dosed properly yet. and every now and then i would dose and i'd get that specific dose combination and i'd feel great uh, but for the most part, outside of those moments where I just seemed to nail the dose right, I was pretty turbulent. And uh, I was beginning to feel like like nothing existed outside of Melbourne. Now, this wasn't a sense of like, oh, here's this idea or this this premise that I was playing with. I began to really genuinely question and really genuinely experience um Melbourne as the only reality that existed and that everything before and after Melbourne, or I guess everything but before and, and every concept and belief that I had that there was a before Melbourne and that there was an outside of Melbourne was a fantasy in my mind, kind of the way um, Kurt Russell's character in Vanilla Sky, uh, not to ruin spoiler alert for Vanilla Sky, but at the end gets the sense of recognizing that uh, everything that he thought was his past was a construction of Tom Cruise's mind um, to give his you know dream character a sense of reality. But the point is, is that I didn't believe that there was a past or an outside Melbourne. I was I was really starting to feel like I was in some kind of Truman show where it wasn't like I was the I was the center of it all like people were watching me but the sense that none of it was real in a way I guess it was closer to the movie Dark City if you've ever seen Dark City it was a really interesting sci-fi from I don't know late 90s early 2000s can't remember where uh, this guy wakes up and, and the, the larger premise is that uh, there's a city 
and all of the people in that city believe they're just living their lives, but at a certain hour every day, they're all put to sleep, and this shadowy alien group of people roll around and they move people about, extract their memories and implant new memories, and then start things up and observe how the humans are moving around. So a person who one day was, um, say, the, the, the husband of someone uh, working at a factory would work, wake up and then would be the bellhop at a, at a, at a hotel and would remember his entire life as if he was at the hotel or they um, could implant somebody in the midst of a murder scene and, and wake up and, and they're in the midst of the murder scene even though before they went to sleep they were the bellhop at some hotel so this is the premise and the one guy wakes up and realizes this he realizes that all of the sense that there's a daytime isn't real it's always dark there in the sense that there are other places outside the city um, that is a false memory too because there is nowhere outside of the city if you take the road out of town you just head back into town so i started to believe like i was in a situation like this and it became very distressing the only thing that was holding me together i think is that i had a girlfriend at the time who had a regular job um, and she kind of kept me grounded and then at some point she went away to go travel and all of a sudden i had no more ground i had no no more sense of reality. I had no more sense of what was normal, what was baseline, and I started spiraling out. And uh, now my solution to this was that I would leave Melbourne. I would leave everything. I'd drop everything and go to Byron Bay to see if I could find some healing. Now, interestingly enough, this psychotic episode was the basis for what became my first, I believe, truly spiritual journey, my true, my first truly spiritual awakening, which then leads to the question of what's the difference between a psychotic episode and a spiritual awakening, which is explored in my essay, um, but beyond the uh, scope of this video. But the point here is that this was my psychotic episode. I truly started to believe that this might be the case, and I questioned my reality um, so much so that I needed to prove it to myself to save my own psychology. Anyways, thank you for listening to this video. I hope that what you heard here uh, gives you a point of perspective maybe to start wondering whether or not you might be going through some form of drug-induced psychosis, uh, and if so, I implore you to reach out for help from some understanding people who aren't too wrapped up in the um, the biomedical model uh, but aren't too wrapped up in uh, the alien encounter sort of fringe flat earth anti-vaxxer type of uh, reality either to get a little bit of perspective and hopefully find some uh, find some help if you are interested in hearing my ideas around uh, around this and you'd like to read that essay I've mentioned, you can head to um, my website. There's a little button that just uh, popped up on the side there that you can head over. You can sign up for my newsletter or follow me on social media because I will release it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those places, um, and through my newsletter once it's out. You could also watch my interview with James Kent if you would like to see the larger discussion around uh, psychosis and psychotic episodes inside the psychedelic community. And finally, if you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel as well as share it with your friends. You could also become a patron of mine on Patreon by heading to patreon.com forward slash James W. Gesso or checking out the links in the description below. Thank you very much and I will see you next Friday.